Okay, so inner child um, nurturing, um, do fun things that kids like. So, um, <clears throat> well, I bought incense sticks and my inner child likes to play with them. Is it spelling? No. My inner child likes looking at, let me get the right background. My inner child loves to just look at smoke rings. My uncle Don used to smoke Colt cigars when I was a boy, and I loved the smell of Colt cigar um, tobacco, and he could blow smoke rings, awesome ones, and they would travel like a lot, I don't know, four or five, six feet, amazing smoke rings. So I don't know, and I just get fascinated by the, the art. It's just, you know, against maybe against the black, maybe we can get it. It's just the art of it all, and you move these incense sticks and, you know, you can get a different kind of plume of smoke. And it's just, it's fascinating. And then, you know, so these are just some things that are fun for my inner child. My inner child just loves to look at these kind of things. Because when I was a boy, I loved smoke rings. And, you know, we weren't allowed to smoke, you know, anything when we were boys. You know, I don't know, seven years old, maybe, or maybe I was four. Out at Shabanduan Lake. Okay, other things that my uh, inner child likes to do is to watch baseball. My inner child loves baseball. Loves it, loves it, loves it, loves it, loves it, loves it, loves it. Loves playing it and loves watching it and loves having it on in the background. So even if I'm not watching the ball game, just if it's at a low level, my inner child is like very happy. Just because baseball just loves baseball. Very, very happy. And then, I don't know, so, yeah, I don't know, American movies always make things very uh, stranger things because we had the bad news bears and the bad news bears and breaking training and then they went off to Japan, started off with, you know, our characters that we, you know, we liked that when we were kids, we liked those characters that were in the black, bad, black news players or whatever. <coughs> I don't know, they were just having so much fun. And then they went in the van ride and, and breaking training. It was just so much fun because those are just dreams of it. All of us kids, well, we would just love to have like all that. Just, just fun. And, and all that stuff. So that's just a fun baseball movie. And then unfortunately or whatever, it gets contaminated baseball with American horror movies. I don't know, it just seems to be like it, the sequel to the Stanley Kubrick film, The Shining, Dr. Sleep. Well, it's about red rum. And, you know, every child matters, but, you know, the vampire people killed a kid who was a baseball player. Well, they did. They they drank his. They drank all the chi out of him, or something. All they called it steam, but some. Well, I don't know. Yeah, I was, is it true? Yeah, people do do that. It's a horror. And then I also think about others, kind of supernatural. Are they supernatural? I can't remember. It's that Stand by Me uh, novel by Stephen King, novelette or something, and it was made into a movie. And then we have our animal experts at Advanced Everything, like Jonathan Livingston Seagull. And you can listen to that story on YouTube. Look for the version uh, with uh, Sir Richard Harris, because it's got uh, orchestral music that goes along with Sir Richard's audiobook. In the olden days, there was the famous um, dog. Lassie. The little hobo. Um, a heroic dog. Mm, various dog movies. Simba the Lion and the Lion King and the odd bunch of uh, the strange animals that were in uh, bed knobs and broomsticks. The Jungle Book, 
my well, some of these are cartoon, but just because they're cartoon doesn't mean they're actually cartoon. Because it just might have been portrayed as a cartoon. Like, you know, the cool world version of Brad Pitt or something. I don't know. Did you find the vampire version of Brad Pitt sexy? Well, it was pretty hot when he was making out with Tom Cruise. You know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. In those days, you do. It was all in the closet. And then when a mainstream movie actually shows these people that are clearly boyfriends, I don't know, at least friends with benefits quite often, they travel together all the time. I don't know. I don't have anything one way or another. I do. I do. I travel around the same way they are, that I arrived in this, on this planet. I, you know, a naked body thing, meat suit or whatever, that you know, you gotta put clothes on or everything. You know, because, well, you can't walk around with your birthday suit all the time. Well, you do, but you gotta like, make sure that it's, you know, got messages like every child matters and, you know, baseball. And, you know, the feeling that we need to get everybody out of these horrific Groundhog Day movies where it's just nothing but stories about horrible, 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 horrible. And that's what we're told the planetary spirit of Earth, they call her maybe Gaia, G-A-I-A, Mother Earth herself has decided to take all of her children, the good, the bad, and the ugly, to 5D Earth. Whether you want to stay in the lower astral and, or whatever, Mother Earth is, she's just bigger. I don't know. Is she bigger or not? Because you might be giving your power away to the idea that just because the planet appears to be a huge globe, that she's somehow superior to you in saying what's going to happen in our reality. Never give your power away. This is some people's advice. And they quite often say that we give way too much power away to what we call the government. Because it's so open to corruption and abuse. And in, in the end, they've got taxation powers and they've got the enforcement ability because they're allowed to have guns with their policy police. And the rest of us in Canada, we ain't allowed to have weapons. There is no right to bear arms in Canada. Anyways, if you ask most urban Canadians, it's like the last thing they want to do is buy a gun. If there were guns available in a Menard sporting goods store here, would I be the first one in line to buy a handgun? Because it was offered, to, if it was allowed to be, like if they got rid of all the handgun laws, would I buy a gun? Yeah. No. No. When I go to the USA, you know, the first, when I get off the plane, do I go into a gun shop or, you know, on to Kijiji and, let, and try and buy a gun? No. Do I know how to shoot a gun? Yes. What guns have I shot? Well, this is just, yes, across the board, they want to know, like, you know, or whatever. Um, a 410 shotgun and probably a 12 gauge shotgun. Have I ever shot a rifle? Mm, no. But, you know, in video games, you know, in the video games like Quake and Doom, well, you know, they give you various kinds of shoot 'em up kind of weapons. So, in a virtual, you know, we, we, it wasn't like Oculus or anything. No, you'd be looking at it on a computer screen back in the olden days. But we did do a lot of violent, you know, video games in those days. I mean, it was very popular. Does that translate over to this world reality? You know, things that you practice in... Well, they made a movie where they had a bunch of geeks who were computer gamers and they had to go and train a bunch of U.S. Army special ops people 
on even more advanced techni techniques in gaming in order to, I don't know. Are we playing Ready Player One? I'm not. But I do have the feeling that Ready Player One has been imposed upon us. Because it's part of Earth Ascension and forcing us to participate in um, Earth Ascension. In rising to higher consciousness because we're going to have to rise, to, rise to in consciousness in order to get the spiritual gifts like... Well, in a video game, shoot them up one, you need a better, better than a handgun in some of those vir virtual worlds. Or if you're going to take on a shambler in that kind of a video game, well, you got to have as much super weaponry, and then you got to wait for, like, the BFG big fucking gun, the BFG 9000 or something, that is going to be the only thing that's going to take out, I don't know, an electronic spider or electronic sp a shambler, uh, a super... Super, super demon. But, you know, it was only, you know, off a of CD-ROM and, you know, played through my computer. You know, I was never at risk of the Shambler, actually. Well, quite often, you know, you're so involved with your imagination tied into the video game that, you know, you kind of almost cringe sometimes when these... You kind of do. You kind of do get in there. So your imagination does get activated. Can you accidentally, as the sorcerer's apprentice, manifest a shambler or an electronic spider in your outside reality? You better watch out, because you better believe you can. Yes. You better believe it. What is hold, held in mind tends to manifest anyways, and in an ascending earth, ascending on the scale of human consciousness, more consciousness means... All of the stuff that is not of higher consciousness, like electronic monsters, have got to be... Uh, well, they can't come into higher consciousness. So, uh, what do they call it? Collapsing of the waveform of this conscious, conscious thought form. Collapse the wave... Blah, 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 collapse the waveform is like a quantum physics way of saying... Um, I do know. Doing your manifestation, however you're trying to do it by magical means or non-magical means, or it just happened by accident, or I kind of did want that slice of pizza, and then I just got delivered right here to my table without me even lifting a finger. It just came, and somebody said, would you like it? I'm like, sure, and there it was. Thank you so much. And that serendipity and serendipity... Um, in, you know, getting the slice of pizza is a good thing. And getting the shambler is more problematic. Well, I don't know, even if you're, like, it, I was told by Reed Kegel that uh, in places like, uh, I don't know, maybe say San Antonio, Texas, or maybe it's Dallas, Texas, that on Saturday night, most people have a, a loaded... Handgun, Saturday Night Special, I don't know, 38 or God only knows whatever, BFG, BFG 9000 in the glove compartment. Now, where I live in Thunder Bay, Canada, do people, you no, know, you're not allowed to have guns in a car. Are you fucking kidding me? You want to go to the penitentiary in a great big area? Yeah. You, oh, I'm serious. Oh, I know. I got, well, because people are allowed, um, if they go through hunter safety, uh, whatever, um, to get a, a government license to have a long gun, but it's under attack by Trudeau. But, you know, could you fight a, a, a much with a, a long gun? Even if you have it, well, you can take down a bear, 30-odd six probably. I don't know, because I, I, my cousin Phil Wally would use all these kind of things, because he knows everything about those, that those Wally boys are outdoorsmen. But even with their collection of, you know, hunting weapons, I don't know, sniper, I don't know, they did sell those things, but I don't know, I just can't see it, there's not enough physical labor to do the Wolverine's Red Dawn scenario as presented by American movies to us, I don't know, was it Patrick Swayze was in that movie, because the communists invaded from Cuba and China, and now we know that the Canadian Prime Minister is quite likely the son of 
the actor who plays um, the actor who plays Fidel Castro, the supposedly dead leader of communist Cuba, uh, mortal enemy to capitalist USA. I don't know. These stories just go on and on and on. Are there all these things that we watched on television going to manifest in our outside reality? Metaphysically, I think it's possible. Um, what are ways that you can avoid, that you can avoid, unless you're like, I don't know, maybe, I don't know, you want to play um, against the Shambler with your, I don't know, like, you're not allowed to have, like, ninja stars in Canada. You can't have ninja stars in Canada. Officially, you know, I, they're not available at the corner store here in Thunder Bay. No. Plastic copies? Nope. Water pistols, even water pistols are pretty rare. I think you could find it in Walmart, but not a huge selection. The much larger selection of water pistols at Senate's Variety Corner Store on Victoria Avenue, where I used to go in there to buy gum and stuff. Cool stuff. It's just that, um, you know, some people's idea of 4D Earth, which is leaving the old Earth, which is a hell world, and then going into sort of a middle of the road, technically a positively inclined world, but just exiting hell, and then entering for, entering the age of Aquarius, the fifth dimensional earth, which is next, but having to dump off all the shit that was dragged along after we left hell, officially in 1987, at the time of the harmonic convergence, conver convergence, I think they're calling it. Um, an astrological thing where people did a lot of group meditation to raise consciousness. Um, well, the whole idea was to get more consciousness on the planet so that we won't have a nuclear um, winter, a nuclear war. Because if people stay at too low consciousness, they will manifest harsh realm. That is a post-nuclear apocalyptic world where the only things that uh, survive really well are cockroaches and rats. And humans um, are... <clears throat> turned into <coughs> Mad Max scenarios, maybe, or I don't know. Dear knows where you go with that, but it's we get so sick of watching those TV shows and Netflix anyways. Do you really want to experience that more? Cause we, uh, no. I'm, I was told Grandma the other day, well, just this old lady that looked older than me, hard to believe, but yeah, well, she was still wearing a mask. She was outside of Walmart looking at spring flowers and I don't know, that day wasn't that warm, but she was wearing a mask, and it's like, you know, why, why are you doing that, Grandma? Anyways, it's just, I, you know, I just said a prayer out loud. It's like, I, I, after living through so much hell world, Earth, we demand and we deserve heaven on Earth for a change. So be the change by priming the pump and stop eating meat and stop drinking booze. Okay, there's two vices that I'm ordering you off the list as me. My recommendations to you. Because that will raise your consciousness and prevent you from instantly being reborn uh, when you wake up or something as a pig about to go in the slaughterhouse to make more bacon eaters for people like you. Because instant karma might speed up, so it might not be until your next lifetime that you have to pay off that bacon eater and you know, BLT and, you know, ham slices and, I don't know, ribs or, you know, shellfish dip or, I don't know, chocolate-covered ants. And booze, I don't know, you, you really know. So then what I'm going to tell you is that you can pick up two formerly forbidden vices. And that is... And cigarettes and marijuana and then for drinky poo and coffee and tea juice um what about milk um it's kind of borderline right now just because of this I don't know if 
but this body is still buying milk for a little while it was buying like almond milk and then i don't know then we found that there's such a small amount of vegetarian style food that quite often might have some cheese in it or whatever so we just said given the lack of availability you know the way my life thing is that you know that to allow milk and um it's not eating eggs and it did it really liked eggs so it's not eating eggs but if there was eggs in some prepared thing like bread and stuff well then we still buy the bread so you know it is it's difficult so that lacto ovaria or whatever you call that thing well that's what it is and you know it doesn't eat a lot of vegetables mm, bread and water mostly peanut butter cliff bars you know fruit juices uh, or likes cookies because the inner child likes cookies I'm not going to forbid that the, I gave away the keys to this body anyway. Me, Bob, I, I, gave, I gifted this body with this body back. Because it's the, you know, the muscle memory, uh, it's known as the inner child. That's a Hugh Len teaching that I got uh, from E. Haleakala Hugh Len when I went to a seminar in Portland, Oregon many years ago. Because that's what we did in the seminar. We did a lot of work healing the inner child. Uh, uh, well, the inner child... And earlier versions of me, um, a very frightened boy at five and six years old with movies like The Wizard of Oz and those flying monkeys. Scared? Well, that's what I'm given to remember is that didn't like that movie. Do I like it now? I, I, yeah, I like playing it with, for example, there's a version of it you can find on YouTube where it's The Wizard of Oz and the soundtrack is uh, is Pink Floyd. You don't want to talk about A Clockwork Orange? Well, I don't know because this is the problem. We have so few colors in what we can see. So that even though this is about love for humanity every child matters love for humanity we've got this horrible hollywood link to a clockwork orange and mm, ultra violence and seriously we just can't do it the inner child at certain ages is just uh, we're totally fucked trying to heal our inner children at certain ages when we've still got other versions of us that are willing to watch horror movies. I don't know, me at 11, 12, 13, like those kind of movies. Any old movie, anything, would you watch anything? Just what, what do we have? We watch anything that's, that's there, anything available. And, you know, just... Cosmo Box, that, which was in um, Victoriaville Mall, they rented us a VHS machine in a suitcase, so you could easily carry it, because they were pretty big, you could carry it to the car. And like, I don't know, 15 or 25 VHS movies, you go pick, and then it was a package price, and then there'd be like, I don't know, let's say 10 of us, 11 or 12 years old, 15 years old, well, we would just spend, you know, a weekend, winters are long in Canada, and you know, if it's January, you don't want to be outside all the time. Well, if it's, I mean, if you can go skiing, then maybe you go skiing, but, you know, maybe some of those days is even too cold to go. Because I went yesterday, it was too cold, I didn't want to go today. So, if you want an indoor day, and then you're going to go to Gourds and watch. Well, they gave you anything that was, it was crazy, because they had blue laws in Ontario where you couldn't buy printed magazines like Penthouse, without them putting black circles over the, you know, private parts. You know? Gay magazines are totally forbidden. 
and uh, which you know, just makes you know, I don't know persecution, gay bashings, and things just add to the I don't know hatred towards. Um, well, I don't know what else. So uh, fast forward, fast forward, fast forward, fast forward. Well, ultra violence, Clockwork Orange, and this is supposed to be for protecting the children. Every child matters. And Clockwork Orange is about the most horrible thing for children. It's violence. So, you know, healing runs, because that's everybody's responsibility. To remember themselves as much as they can of your own lifetime. And you don't want to go back there because it's all in the past. Don't make up with the past because you're going to accuse me of saying, well, you always live in the moment or Eckhart Tolle or whatever. Well, sometimes your now moments have got to be processing stuff that maybe you think is an adult, like, you know, whatever it is. But maybe as an adult, you sometimes get tummy aches out of nowhere. Tony Soprano was having different kinds of meltdowns in The Sopranos, and he had to go and see the psychiatrist, and he took all these different things, and in the end, she kept saying, Tony, it's, he's kind of like all about what you are, Mr. Gangster, and there's parts of you, Tony, that are clearly upset, aspects of you, Tony Soprano, that are upset with your way you're living your life. And it's making you, those aspects are, they're punching other aspects of you. So you've got an internal conflict between two wolves, the good wolf and the bad wolf. And part of the time you feed both wolves, you know, in front of virtue signaling that, you know, you're a good tax-paying American and, you know, not too much dirty work, but mostly above board, garbage collections and things. Well, you know, like Gus Frank and, you know, Better Call Saul or Breaking Bad. I know, but this is just the way it is because let's be realistic. You can't hang Gus Frink or Tony Soprano and not, you know, hang yourself too. Because if it wasn't you who was getting something from a friend who was getting it from one of the people that worked for Tony Soprano. Then on your 49th birthday, you didn't have and a best fuck of your life from that person from your past. Unrequited love. And at age 49, you got what you needed in order to get the biggest orgasm you never thought it was possible. You never thought that it was possible to reach that new level of I gotta have an ego juice thing that is on my bucket list and I'm a rich Hollywood bitch. And I, and there was, a, I don't know, there was the pool boy from, I don't know, 10 years ago when we were living in um, Seville, Spain. And that pool boy, I, 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 I you know, I, I don't know what it, it just it just didn't line up. I don't know why, because I always wanted that pool boy. Anyways, that pool boy, I don't know, lost track of that guy. And then I just started having dreams of this pool boy. And I, I just remembered how that pool boy looked at me a certain way. And not only did he turn me on, but for God's sake, I thought maybe I was going to be safe with that pool boy. Maybe just for the time of the sex, but I just was going to be like able to finally relax. Because I've got all this tension from having these rough sex where, you know, there were people that were going too far. And at the time, I was participating, and there were times when, to be honest, I was going too far. Now, this is not Bobby Burroughs talking. This is me acting like um, those two women in the British comedy, it wasn't the two Ronnies, absolutely fabulous. Because those are the kind of things that they would talk about. But then Patsy's going to say, but in the end... I got the wherewithal to go. And it, I know it was a big rigmarole to get it already. No, we had all our fun getting everything and causing all the drama, whatever. But I went. And somehow, I found that pool boy. And it was as, as if, it was as if, there, no time had passed at all. 
it was like clearly he wasn't surprised to see me and he wasn't unsurprised to see me he he was just the same way he was and I, I was like Patsy said there is nothing miraculous other than when Elton John when Sir Elton John orders a vodka and tonic like he talks about in that song that Elton John song truly if Sir Elton's going to the bar and you know we're going to crash the bar when we find out where he's going to go and we're going to watch to see which bartender makes him the vodka and tonic because that's what he said in one of the songs that when it's just too much for him what he needs is vodka and tonics so we're going to go and find out where Sir Elton goes and we're going to find out which bartender is and then we're going to mosey on over there and we're going to sit down to Sir Elton and we're going to go and give him you know, our experience for him. And we're going to make sure that we, we're going to go and get exact recipe. We're going to watch because it's not about Sir Elton. Hey, I'm a dozen, I'm a we need the recipe that he, because if that's what's the money it is, because there's only one of him and then you can't charge to go and see him. But if you get the right recipe for the Elton John version of the vodka and tonic, we can get rich! We can get rich! This is the authentic one! And I don't know, we'll get a picture surreptitiously of us and the bartender and we'll have the recipe and we'll show it here and we're gonna get... Oh, I don't know, we can't charge money. How are we gonna charge money? We'll get it on Instagram and we'll get it first. We'll, we're, gonna get, we're gonna get noogies on Instagram, the picture of it and, and the full thing. And then we're gonna... Because everybody follows us, everybody follows uh, him. And then whatever that bar is... Uh, Shit, well, then we're never going to be able to go back there because they're always going to be crashing. Because this is the problem with, was it Alec Baldwin and Kim Basinger on The Simpsons when The Simpsons people uh, thought they were celebrities? Uh, and then they're going to go, oh, because, of, no, we don't want to ruin this. We want to come back. I thought these martinis are, is this her own, are you going to be here? And then they're going to say, well, I don't want to do this old faggot. He's an old man. He's a queer. I'm bisexual. I don't know. Looking at they're looking at this old man, Elsa Elton John is like a rocket man. And he's like, oh, but you came out as queer, I don't know, 50 years ago, and now you're I don't know. There's no one else here that we can jump on their bone. You're the only man here, so well, because Patsy never ever thought these things were actually going to come true, that she was going to have to uh, pony up for you know the queer men now. <sighs> Well, I don't know, because she's got her bucket list and she's covered every straight man, declared and undeclared. And then she's hit every bisexual. And now she's looking at, you know, people who were like the 10% solution, 10% bisexual and, you know, 90% queer. Well, she's already looked at all the muff diving things and she's seen, because she said she did that in college. And she doesn't go about this. She's only one thing left. And she says, but she really is hurt and she wants to have an unvaccinated, um, what would it be? Unvaxed, they call it unvaxed, because there are people that say, you know, you're vaxed only on Grinder, but the unvaxed are there too. Unvaxed, and they don't want any of that chemical, so they don't want anybody on prep. So, so they want, that's what they want. They want queers who are unvaxed, and not on prep. That's that prep that prepares you to um, pay forever for HIV retrovirals, whether they've given you a fake, uh, a fake PCR test or whatever that said that you know here's your official government certified, you know, croaker, or, uh, drug pusher guy. You know, he's got the government seal of approval that you know, but he really works for Pfizer Pharmaceuticals, which is. Well, Pfizer was convicted and had the largest fine in the billions of dollars for being a crooked corporation. And even mainstream news. Now, what's the cuckoo news these days? Is mainstream news now cuckoo and alternative news is real? Are they both cuckoo or are they both dying the truth? Sometimes we go and pick from various places. Anyways, the government hasn't officially told us that HIV and Hep C. Uh, what other viral diseases, cancer viral vectors, are all um, uh, in the movie The Secret, which came out, I don't know, was it 25 years ago, about laws of manifestation, law of attraction? It was all brand new to us, and even today, you know, 
I still quite baffled by it. You know, you can listen to Abraham Hicks on YouTube and her whirlwinds of manifestation. I don't know. I, I just don't see it the way she sees it. I, I like to listen to it, but, you know, I'm I, I, I'm not a muggle. That's a person that denies that magic exists and can't do magic. I'm not a mu I'm not a muggle. I'm I'm a squib. I'm am I going to be a magician ability to consciously do things? I don't know. But the current time, and I have been for quite a long time, what I consider the squib, which is the janitor at Ho at Hogwarts in the movies. The janitor at Hogwarts is um, me. I see magical things happening, but I'm not magical. Look, if I say abracadabra, hocus pocus, nothing happens. You know, nothing happens in here. Nothing happens. So, you know, I, oh, you're going to ask about me being, being the warlock. I'm not the warlock. When I say I'm the warlock, I'm, I have no training as a warlock. But, um, psycho psychology would perhaps say that I'm activating the archetype of the warlock. And so, you know, by extension, the warlock already exists, and I'm... Um, I, I don't know. When you say, I am the warlock, does that make me the warlock? No, I don't get, like, downloads. Like, okay, in the Matrix movie, Keanu Reeves got downloads how to do karate and all that stuff. He didn't learn to do karate the old-fashioned way at the Karate Kid place with, you know, Pat and Rita or something. He didn't have John Kreese. Oh, no, he got a download directly into him, and then he could do super karate. Can I do that? Not as far as I know. Do I feel like this body? No. No. It's had fibromyalgia since I had to quit as a PSW. I, I didn't quit. I'm still technically um, on the employee list there, but I've been off list that is, I don't know, I, long term, I can't work because of the fibromyalgia. I, you know, so my hands aren't strong. So, no, I haven't got downloads of healing. Now, do I channel Reiki healing energy? My intention is to do it all the time. Yes. But does it help me healing? Yes, but does it cure fibromyalgia for me? No, no. And so it's 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 very tiring, and that's you know what I consider myself a crippled um, person. Yep. Am I getting any kind of government benefit? No. Should I? Yep. Why don't I? Oh, well, impossible to meet criteria from the government, and it just you know they don't come and pick you up in um, a limo or a van or anything and take you to a place where, you know, an intake center where they're going to put you in a concentration camp because, you know, if you know you can't make it in our, you know, donut dolly economy of $15 an hour when, you know, there's people that, I don't know, they just you know, want a passive income by buying a bunch of houses that could have been used for you. Well, maybe they'll rent them out for a while, but then they're going to be like the overseas people in Vancouver. Because it's a huge thing in the Vancouver Sun, they always say that vast areas of the um, um, tall condominium towers are owned by people who don't live in Vancouver, and they never come. So they just own all this property there, and they pay the taxes or whatever on it, but they, they're they totally vacant. And then the people that are supposed to be living in cities, there's nowhere for them to live because these out-of-town people are one percenters, and it's nothing for them to buy up everything. And they expect the people who are, well, you know, when I was a PSW, I don't know, 20 bucks an hour. And then, you know, they still take taxes off of it, and somehow you're supposed to survive. That's, uh, well, my sister was a supply teacher, and um, she was making two times what I was making as a personal support worker looking after old people and, you know, other disabled people at old folks' homes. So, you know, totally unvalued people like me, and they, you know, what they're going to do is they're just going to kill off all of you, and then they won't need to old folks' homes to house all of you people. Because that's the plan with the Georgia Guidestones. 
they're reducing the world population from 8 billion people to 500 million people. Well, they just they don't want to bother anymore with all of you. You're all the same. You're all clones. Everything you learned, you learned from government indoctrination schools and from, you know, Netflix movies and, you know, when you used to go out to the movies. And your friends who watch TV and movies and you all learned how to be human and how to be muggles from TV. So, I mean, there'd be very few people. I don't think it's very, pu very few people because I was in the Mystic Garden in Thunder Bay, the witches and magical people store. Yeah, there's people that come in and out of there and they're spending real money. So, there's definitely people that are into manifesting what they want or I don't know. Maybe they just want to do... I don't know. I'm not sure if they're witches or not because a lot of times people like to burn incense because they just like to smell or, you know, like I showed you earlier, it's because, you know, your inner child just likes to wait because it's like bubbles. That's a good thing to get. If you're at the dollar store or something, see if they've got those um, soap bubbles. We had those when we were kids. And you take them outside and you just wave the plastic wand and you get bubbles and you get rainbow colors on them and little kids just they giggle and you see the universe clicked on that they give you a big hawk so the universe says yes so you who have an inner child that maybe you just can't seem to make it happy because all the time you do everything you buy it a new car and you bought it i don't know a trip to here there, there and in the end that's not what the kid wanted the kid wanted something from when it was really little it wants a birthday party when it was four years old And you have to figure out how you, as an adult, hard-nosed son of a bitch, are going to, well, Fat Tony, Fat Tony Salerno on The Simpsons was the godfather to Maggie Simpson for a while. Well, he really wanted to be the godfather to a little one, and he wasn't about hurting that one at all. No, but he might push a lot of other people who have inner child. But he says, "Well, you're adult, so you know." Fat Tony's got to realize that even Homer Simpson, or Marge Simpson, uh, everybody, you know, Chief Clancy Wiggum, they've got an inner child that at various times wants to re be itself at various memories that it has, and if it's you know a four-year-old birthday cake. And it's a white icing. Well, the inner child wants to have that cake. And it wants to have a chocolate cake too. And maybe a rainbow cake. And an ice cream cake. And that child wants to pick who gets to come. And if it's in a pissy mood, it might exclude certain people. Because just 10 minutes ago, they pissed them off. Or they pissed them off from, I don't know, I don't know how far back you can remember when you're a little kid. But certain people, I, I don't know. I don't know if you're vindictive or not when you were four. I can't remember when I was four. Do I think I had people that were my shit list or not? Mm. No. Seems to me, like I trapped, I went to several different schools in those days. And seems to me like, you know, you had cookie time, cookies and milk. And then I don't know what you did. Played with toys for a little while, ran around a little bit. And then they had these little mats, and you would go, and, you know, you'd have a little time for a little nap, because you were just little. You know, if you're four or five years old, well, they always encourage you to sleep a lot when you were younger, and, you know, when you are at school, you got to nap. So why is it that, you know, by the time you get to, definitely by grade two, there is no more nap time. And all the kids know how to do that thing where, you know, you put your head down, can you see? You put your head down on the desk because you're so sleepy tired. It's just like, I know, I don't want to be here at this stupid school. And this is very uncomfortable. And I'm so sleepy tired. I am, you don't even think about when you were younger. You don't. I never remember that. But I do remember many times. It's like, I just got to put my head down. So why aren't our schools set up to be, you know, friendly? I, I don't know. The devils want me to remind you that they are huge Stephen King fans. But there's other things, but mostly Stephen King. Edgar Allan Poe, The Raven. 
and I think he had the monkey's paw and other things like that. Glad Day Bookstore on Davy Street. Gay vampire novels, novellas, literatica. Homoerotic, gorgeous creatures in love, lust, in love, lusty with one another. So it's not a lust to know and sink, sink your teeth in there and you know and kill them. Sometimes they have these stories where they do, and then they, I don't know, they bring you back to life or something as a vampire. That was how. Was it Lestat that made Louis the vampire, or Louis was the one that made Lestat the vampire? No, there was two different. They didn't have the same vampire father. They had, you know, I don't know, in the in the family tree of vampires, no, they had two separate father mothers or whatever it was that bit them. I don't know. I'm not one of them things. As far as I know. I don't know. I don't know, because they're very surreptitious, and they could. According to, you know, if you're like a normal human, you can't see them from time to time. They have preternatural speed and abilities to cloak themselves. According to, you know, I don't know. Have I met people that look like they could be vampire? Yeah, you know, some people have a certain face and a certain kind of uh, fangs that are just... I don't know. I just write them down as they're human, and sometimes they just got you know whatever they got. When that's just where I was. I don't know. I was like, oh, they just got such a wide variety of humans, and they're all humans. And, you know, if they were Gorn, because we saw on Star Trek. Well, where did I learn all this stuff? On Star Trek original series, we saw humans that were out in space. And it was a sample of humans. And they met other species that were completely different. So, you know, if you're going to have, like, I don't know, the Gorn, reptilian people, well, everybody on the Enterprise is human. And what about the colors and all that? Well, didn't seem to have any racism, homophobia. Um, there were no um, homosexual relations there. Heterosexual relations seem to be forbidden. A big morality play. Well, yeah, seem to be a creature of the 60s or just modern day. It seems to be the same thing now and again. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. How much do we get influenced by these? 100% or quite a bit or even when you try not to. You can't relate to other humans without going back to things that you learned. You know, from Hollywood movies and government schools. I know. I mean, you want to run away from it because you know so much of it's fake, and yet you shared your whole life with these things being your truth and your fact. And even when they're all been proven to be fake news or impossible to verify, you just you lose your footing in the human reality because when you see over and over again, again, I told you, Pfizer was a multiple-time... Um, held guilty criminal corporation paid billions in fines and it's bigger than ever can afford to pay billions and you know, how do you compete with that kind of economic well the only way you can I don't know I don't want to talk about it um, okay that's enough